Here we go. Hey guys, we're out here in Petra. Klein and Gar can't be here because Dempsey wouldn't let them cut in line. All right. <laughs> What's up guys, the MK Videos. If you are new to my channel, I make military content, put it on the internet for you guys to enjoy. With me, I have the wonderful Eleni. She is one of the shipwriter corpsmen. Um, she's gonna give you a little perspective on what it's like to be a corpsman on the ship, because I know you guys ask me a bunch of questions, and a lot of you guys go into a ship, and I just don't have the answers, because I'm a little pogue. That was loud as hell. Start us off, give us like a little background. When you joined the Navy, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh. All right, so when did you join the Navy? In 2013. Um, so you went through core school, you didn't have any like NECs or anything, right? Nope, they oh. offered me, I could have taken one, but I was like, I want to get my feet wet, you know, let's try this whole Navy experience, and feet, I came in. Feet wet? Quad zero, yep. <laughs> So we're both quads here. Straight to the war. <laughs> dope, dope. And then they moved you to uh, uh, Balboa Lab, right? Yep, I was in the lab for a little bit. Not a lab tech, but I am a lab tech. Not a lab tech. That just shows you, because I'm going to interview one of my lab tech buddies after this. Um, anyone can do it. Anyone. Anyone. It's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> but she eventually got orders to the ship that we're both deployed on right now. So normal, right? You get to sit down and pick, hey, I'd like to go here. Call my detailer, call my detailer. Hey, when can I pick orders? When can I pick? My stuff's locked. What's going on? Oh, yeah, yeah. So we got to contact you next week. Contact next week. Hey, by the way, you're going with <laughs> That's some Final Fantasy stuff. This is. That's, so yes or no. Me coming towards the camera wasn't me pushing myself. The boat will literally, like, let me just, let me give you guys a little example, right? We're just gonna, we're just gonna keep moving ourselves. Oh, no. Uh, this is the, uh... That's the fit, as one would call. The custom fit. I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna love you guys doing this. <laughs> As you guys know, majority of corpsmen do not go to ships. Going to ship is like extremely rare. You're either going to go to a hospital, actually three and four out of orders available for corpsmen is shore duty, so you're probably going to a hospital or you're probably going greenside. Going to ship is like a weird little, there's only a few corpsmen every single ship and you gotta think there's 26,000 of us, so like you say 90% of corpsmen aren't on ships. Clinics are hospitals. Yeah, clinics are hospitals. So that's all you're gonna get. So she has a unique behind the scene experience. So especially because she's got to experience like regular blue side before this at like a civilian like medical place, military medical place. She, you're a paramedic beforehand? Which is even dope. She's better than the corpsman already off the bat. <laughs> she was too qualified. I don't know why she uh I don't know what I did in my past life. <laughs> As you go to A school and you're like, you know less. <laughs> but uh, what was it? What was it like showing up to the ship? What were your expectations since you were working I, in lab in a ward? I was so over the hospital, the ward. All right, so ward you work twelve hour shifts until thirteen. Every other weekend, so three hours, three day weekend, and then they placed me in the lab as a non lab tech, and I hated my life. <laughs> <laughs> lab techs are like the most underappreciated miserable human beings in the Navy. <laughs> it's awful for them. I really feel for them. Um, I hated it. And then uh, it was time to either read this or get out. And I'm just currently still working on my degree and I have a single parent and I have a, uh, a son. So I was like, I'm going to re-enlist and do my last end of my contract. Try the real Navy. You know, go to a ship go to and, a ship, go and to really a ship. be a sailor. You know? <laughs> Not that I got to pick the ship. <laughs> Never got to log into CMS ID, whatever the hell that is, but been in for about seven years, ten months now, and uh, yeah, it's been fun. But uh, it's, it's crazy, because when I first came to the ship, like, the level of care, even if you guys don't see it in everyone, the genuine level of care, because I was talking about you when I first came in, you were showing me, she was showing me all these different specialties that she knew how to do off the top of her head, and when I came from, like, a clinic, all I knew was, like, the occupational specialty I was in, but when you go to a ship, you have to qual in pretty much everyone's specialty just in case you're left alone because there's a lot of times when you're on duty you're pretty much by yourself or you're floating by yourself so these dudes that go on a ship your like level of knowledge if you start off as like an e3 is probably going to be way over some e3 that's just put in like a records department or something at a clinic those dudes aren't gonna those dudes like stalemate 
pretty much until they go operational. And then even if you go green side, you pretty much just learn a bunch of trauma medicine. That's why I like touching lab, radiology, dental, just right over my head. But then, you know, these shipboard corpsmen just know everything. <laughs> God damn it. I love like, I, point, I paint such a good picture to them of green side. I'm like, yeah, you know, real corpsman, green side, green side. And then, I, then we like look at our like tests that we score, and it's like shit. That's not pretty <laughs> They have these things uh, called bed teams, right? So like in each of the, like little surgical rooms, you have like an emergency response bed team. Now at hospitals, like vasobagels can count as like a code blue, sure, whatever. Not not a, a real code blue, but they call it overhead until someone just walks up to him and shakes his legs and he wakes up. Greenside, it is so hard to count something as a medical emergency because it's like, ah, you're good, man. You're good. On a ship, we had a guy with a sprained ankle get picked up by a stretcher team. A four-man stretcher team. <laughs> Carried into medical and placed on the bed. <laughs> but it's dope. These uh these corpsmen are definitely like the hardest working corpsmen out of any specialty. If you get it, if you get it like a uh, specialty C school, you're probably gonna chill in a clinic. And if you go green side, physically hard sometimes, like like rucks and stuff. But like work wise, it's super easy. You probably have like 96s all the time. You probably have you know easy work days. Like back in my green side unit, Fridays probably weren't weren't a thing. Like you would stay till after PT and then you would go home. Do you ever work at the clinic and you get there and there's too many people and not enough patients and like, hey, you want to go home and the next time? Yeah. It used to happen at the ward all the time. I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. These guys, on top of their job, they have to do this thing called maintenance. And when I first checked on the ship, I didn't even know what maintenance was. But these guys, essentially, it's like a, a bunch of collateral duties built into one. They log onto a computer and they get assigned random jobs to stack on top of the patient care. And when they're not doing that, they just get labored out to other departments for like working parties. Which uh, yeah. working party for right? yeah. every consecutive she's, working party. Work, she's the working party LPO. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, regular regular Navy jobs um, get to see this all the time. If you're a corpsman, we're kind of like pampered. We're kind of spoiled a little. You don't you don't necessarily get that as much green side because your Marines do it. You're always like being the medical coverage. And then at a clinic, that's not really a thing. When you get on a ship and you're a corpsman, you don't get like the luxury of you know green side corpsman where it's like, oh doc, you're in the BS. Oh chief, I'm with the you know Marines. Whatever. These guys are working such long hours for so many days at a time, like genuinely going on duty. Oh. I forgot where I was. We get labored out. Oh, all right. I was I was telling these guys. I'm like, yeah, you know, 3:30, we're probably dipping. These guys don't even get to like walk off the ship to like for something. Then they still have to go find their car, which they probably had to park a mile away from the ship. And then they have to drive home in San Diego, like rush time traffic. So, um, genuinely, if you want, I would say I wouldn't say. I don't know. Maybe in hindsight, you might find it the most rewarding. Maybe once you're out of this place. If you're an E3 and you want the medical knowledge, I would say come here or go to a big MTF, like Balboa, Bethesda, something overseas, something where you can like jump around to different uh, like occupational specialties. If you just want to do emergency medicine, go Greenside. But if you just want to like jump and just see all the occupational specialties, like I've learned so much since being on this ship. Outside of like, straight up all I knew was like emergency medicine. Like sick hall was so low for me on the totem pole. <laughs> Now I can write a soap now. What does soap stand for? Science Objective Assessment Plan. <laughs> Great side, everyone. That's how I got his airplane. I gotta, I gotta um, knock you guys down peg on. Blue side's pins? <laughs> this thing, man? FMF will make you cry. It will. I don't care who you are, FMF's gonna make you cry. This. I don't know how to say it without making it sound bad. Response. <laughs> if you train hard and study, you. <laughs> the proper people message you. <laughs> we should do like a little info commercial. With the proper PQS and guidance from me. <laughs> I want, we should make a skit. <laughs> With the proper PQS and guidance, you two can get me. Here's a good one. Advancement on the ship. 
How is it competing against peers on a ship? So compared to Velcro, it's nothing but corny. You could literally be part of any organization, have like the best eval, do all the stuff in the command, and you're still gonna rate it with another three, four hundred people that are the exact same thing you're doing. So unless like the hospital and clinics more like, hey, you know someone, hate to say it, it happens, but that's how you're rated. It really is. Um, on the ship, you stand out for what you do, no one else does what you do. So if you have a collateral, that's your collateral. Maybe there's one person under you, but that's just yours. If you've got a specialty, that's your specialty. If you're like the master of that. So being advanced on a ship is a lot easier. Um, it weighs heavier, I think, than it does in a clinic or hospital. Um, being mapped to second, I feel like it would be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> would be a lot easier than it would be to get mapped to second. I'm sure. Yeah, clinics are uh, great. Like operational billets in general are just like better to get mapped because you can take like if you volunteer to get the harder collaterals like if you volunteer to get the the big ones the ones with tons of responsibilities you're going to stand out if you do that at a hospital for example i'm a bls instructor right we have four bls instructors on board i'm the one that primarily taught classes so for me every marine that went through that class every navy person that went through that class that's about or 600, four to six hundred people that I personally taught, that's just me. Whereas if I was at Balboa, yeah, I'm a BLS instructor, but so with 30 other people. Yeah, plus there's probably gonna be like a chain of BLS instructors who get to claim your numbers. Of course. So then <laughs> it looks like they did a thousand plus people. Lots. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if you wanna if you wanna promote operational billets, uh hundred percent way to go. If you are single don't have kids, um, you're well in your marriage, like you're not in that beginning foundation phase and you're established your relationship, go for a ship. It's, it's, it's a lot better for you if you're trying to stay in and make yourself career-wise. Any of those things that I just listed, you got them, don't do it. <laughs> <Stay> <laughs> it's home. hard. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to interview a bunch of other Mormon specialties, maybe a couple other jobs and. uh I don't know, my, 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 my outro is already sucked. I'm probably just going to cut it black right now. Hey, <laughs> I just keep talking. And <laughs> <laughs> or just keep it black from when I said now, but I have our audio still in the background right now, like this.